What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Kakis and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live revealing official information and so let's get started. Now first things first what's been going on this week for Destiny 2? Well last Friday the big news by far was the launch of the Vespers host dungeon. And this was the first time ever that a dungeon had a contest mode and a world's first race, similar to a raid release. However, with this dungeon, when the first three teams beat it, which did actually take a while, then normal difficulty was unlocked for everyone, so normal difficulty is absolutely available, and if you are still yet to do your dungeon run, definitely check out my complete Vespers host dungeon guide linked right up above. However, guys, there's been a lot of weird stuff going on with this dungeon, and overall, there's a ton of complaints from the community. So, right off the bat, this Tuesday, something else with the dungeon happened, and that is Master Difficulty got unlocked. However, Master Difficulty is completely glitched because, as you can see right here, Artifice Armor is not dropping. So, Bungie said they're keeping it available so you can still go in and get some triumphs, but the main reward, the main reason you're doing it on Master is not even there. Now, there's a bit of a conspiracy going on within the community right now that Bungie intentionally disabled Artifice Armor drops until they can fix the ball duping glitch. For those who don't know, people are going in and farming the absolute crap out of the first encounter because as you can see right here, once you get one nuclear core, you can actually swap weapons just before the bar on planting it is complete and it will dupe the nuclear core as you can see, so you can just get all three plants done pretty much immediately and end the first encounter, making this one of the most efficient dungeon farms out there. Now, a bit of a tip here, guys, this is an incredibly inconsistent like glitch here if you're farming this, uh, it all just is your connection. Like, seriously, find someone with a high ping, find someone from somewhere far away from where you are, and that person's gonna be able to dupe these balls way, way easier. But again, people are speculating that Bungie just doesn't want us farming Artifice Armor this easily. Now, that might sound ridiculous until we talk about the next big drama involving this dungeon, and that is the banned weapons and abilities list. So, for the contest mode, Bungie released all of the things that would be banned, including the Wardcliffe Coil, Salvation's Grip, and importantly, um, Tether. So if you were planning on playing a Night Stalker Hunter, you're kind of screwed. Your super is gone. Like, literally, if you switch to uh, either of these supers, you just don't have a super within the dungeon. And really importantly, even though these bans were made for contest mode specifically, some of them still seem to be in effect. Like if you go and try to do a solo flawless dungeon right now, you still don't have access to a tether. It's just gone. You have no super still, even well after contest mode is over. And on top of that, guys, the drama continues because half of these weapons were not actually banned. You could put them on and use them even in contest mode. Bungie had to come out and say, oh well, they weren't actually banned because they were broken or doing something weird. They're actually banned because they're causing error codes and crashing people's games, specifically the guitar error code. But people have been using stuff like the Wardcliffe Coil. There's been so many clips coming out of people using these quote-unquote banned weapons and not getting error coded. Now Bungie actually replied to one of these videos of the tether because it got re-enabled, a Mobius tether specifically, and then they went back in and disabled it and said, oh, one more second you would have got error coded, trust us. So there's a whole other conspiracy that Bungie disabled a bunch of these weapons just because they were good. They, they were just too good and they would have made these encounters too easy. Is that something that Bungie should be doing for contest mode now this is not confirmed or anything but it's just like caused a whole bunch of drama like the half-assed nature of announcing this entire ban list just before the dungeon goes live half of them aren't even banned half of them are still banned well after contest mode people are just really upset about the whole way that 
went down. And then it gets even worse. There's a bunch of quests that have to do with the dungeon once you're done completing it. You have to go in and find all of these secret puzzles, specifically the Rogue Network quest. And again, I've done a video going over everything you need to know, but it's one of the worst quests I have ever played in terms of glitchiness. It is just a random chance, essentially, that when you load in, you're actually going to have the puzzles you need. God forbid you're playing with a friend. It's super picky on whose instance you actually load in on. And if you are in different portions of the quest, oh, good luck getting the stuff you actually need. So overall, even though the dungeon itself a lot of people, including myself, it was actually a sick dungeon. Everything associated with this dungeon has been nothing short of a buggy mess. And so again, on Tuesday with Artifice Armor not even dropping, it was kind of the cherry on top of, again, such an incredibly buggy dungeon, buggy quests, buggy disabled items. It's just really been not great for the player base. Again, that's not to say that the dungeon itself isn't good content and you know the weapons it's dropping are actually very, very desirable. It's just again a lot of glitches and bugginess associated with this dungeon, which is super unfortunate. Now Bungie actually gets right into uh, this dungeon within the brand new information within the TWAB. First of all, congratulating uh, the first three teams to actually beat this dungeon, talking about if you did beat this dungeon, you can go and get uh, this exclusive bungee reward, a hoodie as well as a bracelet and so on. And also they announced a challenge for content creators. So uh, there's going to be a speed run challenge to see who can run through the dungeon the fastest with a thousand dollars worth of Twitch subs on the line and also a very exclusive emblem. And uh, here is the streaming schedule. So definitely go check those streams out uh, if you're interested in maybe getting the emblem and watching them speed run it. Now, moving on from there, Bungie talks about the new Developer Insight article that released yesterday, and it details Solo Ops. Solo Ops is a brand new type of game mode that's releasing in Destiny Frontiers that is short, rewarding pieces of content focused on solo players, like it doesn't even have matchmaking. Super interesting. This has sparked a ton of discussion within the community. And again, I did a video breaking down that Developer Insight article linked right up above. If you're a solo player, 100% check that out. But guys, after that, we just have an, it's kind of a weird TWAB today, guys. We have another super weird section. Bungie dedicates a huge portion of this TWAB to going over how tonics and fieldwork works. I mean, they could have just linked my ultimate guide video, Bungie. Bungie, send me a DM next time. I got videos that explain everything you're talking about here. But honestly, I mean, this is another example of like what I'm talking about with the, the bugginess and people being confused and all this stuff because the clearly the reason they're going over in such detail how crafting tonics work, how fieldwork missions work is because it is explained so poorly in game. I cannot tell you how many people uh, since I've been streaming have come in and say, said, thank you so much for your videos on uh, the crafting of tonics. I had no idea how it works because people don't know that you have to craft multiple lower level tonics to unlock different recipes, right? And then some lower level tonics can turn into multiple higher rarity recipes. So like, it, again, it is said nowhere in game. You go through this quest line and nowhere does it say, hey, make much more tonics and that unlocks new recipes. So a huge amount of the player base has just been frustrated with the main seasonal mechanic because it was explained so poorly in game. Another just unfortunate thing. I actually like tonics. I really like the idea of putting on a tonic that will give me a chance to farm a specific kind of weapon. I love that there's tonics outside of the seasonal weapons. So once I'm done getting the seasonal weapons, I can farm for world drop weapons and stuff like that. It's actually a great idea. Again, it's just implemented so poorly. And after that, guys, in the 12, the next thing they talk about is another big thing that happened this week, and that is earlier this week, the Destiny mobile game was officially revealed. Rumored for a while, it's called Destiny Rising. And you're seeing gameplay of it right now. It does not look like your normal mobile game. Unironically, 
it looks pretty cool. All right, I'm, ju I'm just being for real, it looks cool. Now, of course, we'll have to wait and see how this actually plays, and we won't have to wait very long. They announced a closed alpha as early as November 1st, which is coming very, very soon. I, of course, I signed up. I'll try to play this and tell you guys how it actually is, but this is another super interesting development this week. Now, I made a video breaking down the announcement and the reaction in much more detail. Check it out, it's linked right up above. But moving on from there, we have the Bungie Foundation Hurricane Relief Campaign. If you do donate to help those affected, you're going to earn this sweet in-game emblem. And of course, the TWAB is linked in the description of this video if you want to head there and donate. Moving on from there, uh, we have some Vespers host wallpapers, but then, very importantly, they have an Iron Banner dates correction. So they said in a previous TWAB, Iron Banner would be back for two weeks on November 5th, which is soon approaching, but they say that's incorrect. Iron Banner will actually be back on the week of November 26th, with Control being the featured game mode uh, for the first week and then Tribute on the next one. That is a long way away over a month until the next Iron Banner, and that's actually gonna matter this season because the featured Iron Banner uh, weapon, or one of the new featured Iron Banner weapons, is a new stasis rocket-assisted frame sidearm with Chill Club. That thing's gonna be insane. So a lot of people are actually looking forward to Iron Banner this time around. Moving on from there, guys, listen, I know this was like kind of a rant session as well, but it really, it plays into this TWAB specifically because Bungie is just rehashing what happened this week and there's a lot of problems this week. So here's the known issues section. Some stuff to really, really keep uh, aware of is first of all, only the first person who opens the chest at the end of a wave 50 onslaught receives rewards. So that bonus third chest for wave 50, yeah, one out of three people in your fire team are actually going to get rewards most of the time. That that's not good. I mean, that I mean, an onslaught to wave fifty takes like over an hour. That is crazy bad. On top of that, guys, there's a bunch of issues with tonic crafting. You can soft lock yourself out of the game by opening the tonic capsule and all this stuff. And also, you can get into a glitch where you can't craft any more tonics. Bungie tweeted about this and said you can just switch characters uh, to bypass this. Uh, it literally happened to me. It, you don't actually get to taste test the tonics. You just make them over and over again. It, it just never works. So yeah, I can't make any tonics on my Titan. That's not even mentioned here in the known issues, I don't think. And also, they have a specific section on Vesper's host dungeon talking about some random stuff. But they don't even mention, they don't even mention uh, the nuclear core duping. They don't even mention a timeline for when stuff like the tether is going to be re-enabled. And they don't even mention the massive amount of glitches people are going through with the, the quest, the rogue network quest loading in, especially step four. Like if people are so, so glitched around step four finding that fourth message, they just can't do it, and there's not even an acknowledgement of that in this known issues section. And of course, I mean, issues and glitches are going to happen. Overall, the dungeon still worked and it was a fun experience and so on, but not even acknowledging some of the biggest complaints involving this dungeon in the specific Vespers host dungeon known issues section is kind of crazy, Bungie. Like, pretending these aren't problems doesn't mean they'll go away. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.